This is Maestro Cretella with a Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Podcast. Today we have a 3v3 on Estia Province. Our first player is Je suis le macaque, uh, if, whatever. Um, he is playing as the Grey Knight Brocat. This is a tanky melee hero in Terminator armor. He cannot be knocked down or suppressed. And he's got some interesting late game spells. Next up, we've got Smith playing as the Tech Marine. This is a Space Marine ranged hero. He's got a gun for every occasion. He can repair, build turrets, support vehicles with Blessing of the Omnissiah, and build a relay. Next up, we've got Zeebowig, or you know what, his name is Zebag. He is playing as yet another Grey Knight Bro Captain. On the other team, first of all, we've got Hibble playing as the Inquisitor. This is an Imperial Guard disabling and debuffing commander. She can also become a tanky melee hero with certain war gears. Next up, we've got Flayed One playing as the Hive Tyrant. Big tanky melee hero who cannot be knocked down or suppressed. He can charge and even become invulnerable. And then finally, we have Sototar playing as a Force Commander. Tanky melee hero. Can be knocked down and suppressed, but he can also buff allied units, I think just space marines, and he can also disrupt. Alright then, we've got the force commander, was chasing down some stormtroopers, now cutting apart some grey knights, but he's in a losing engagement right there, even gets knocked down, he might get, he might get incapacitated in this first engagement, I think he's out of the range of the strike squad, so he will get out of there, but it looks like the grey knights are going to be winning in this lane, or in this particular engagement, I thought I saw the tactical marines about to take the garrison, they do need to be extremely careful about those stormtroopers with the grenade launchers, so they can actually do plenty of anti-garrison damage. So, Z-Bag winning his lane on the right side. Meanwhile, Tyrion is... Oh, and we have a triple Hormagon build. Which is extremely, extremely powerful in like the first one or two minutes of the game. And then it starts actually being countered a bit and it's not so... It's not quite as good. But in pretty much like you can... You can make this an opening build, and in like the first one or two minutes in the game, it will pretty much be uncountered. It's also an extremely high damage build. Like, if this strike squad could be in major, major trouble if it finds itself... Yeah, I mean, it pretty much needed to retreat immediately any longer, and like, that could have been a wipe on the strike squad. So, Sototar thanking his teammate for providing the assist. Oh my god, all of these Hormagons. Uh, meanwhile, the Termagants are sitting in base, doing nothing. So, Hibble is managing to hold the line right here. He has some guardsmen paying with their lives to capture this VP. They need to retreat because it's not worth it for them to lose the entire squad. He is literally one squad that is spending lives to capture the point, while the other two actually, draw, um, actually do damage to, to the Grey Knights. So he takes the garrison, and uh, Jesui Lemakak, he is actually getting some grenade launchers, so he will have some anti-garrison soon. Up until then, he didn't. But, I mean, I guess that's... Uh, you can get, like, it's a pretty easy to get, like, a grenade launcher upgrade on the Stormtroopers, and then you have anti-garrison. Now we see that they're starting to take damage. We even see guardsmen flying out of the building. I don't even know how that works. I, <laughs> I want to see more of them fly out of the building. All right, so we have guardsmen starting to get out because they cannot continue to stay in there against uh, against the inquisitorial stormtroopers with the grenade launchers. Meanwhile, the hormagons are charging. It looks like only two of the hormagons are here, and the hive tyrant manages to get in, tie up the devastator squad, and the devastator squad is taking too much damage, so it does need to get out of there, and it does manage to not lose any models. Tech Marine could be in trouble as well, but he also manages to retreat before suffering any permanent damage. Anyway, Brother Captain actually gets um, stunned by the Inquisitor, so we do have the Inquisitor right here, who is one of the best heroes for countering big tanky melee heroes. And we saw Jesui Lamakak, he really sadly lost a, a strike squad entirely. Uh, they were just standing around there taking range fire. I don't know if maybe he was lagging, but otherwise he lost an entire squad in a situation where he probably shouldn't. Blue team with the lead in VPs, 474 to 452, but the red team is going to take it back. And look at the utterly massive difference in the sizes of the armies between the red team and the blue team. 
Blade One alone has twice as many units as Smith. Hell, Hibble has four times as many units as Jesuila Macaque. Devastator Marines are setting up, but yeah, they they just had so low health, and I feel like the, the Termagants could have split up, but now the Termagants are under fire from actual ranged units that will outperform them, mainly the Tax, but also the Tech Marine. The Tech Marine is going to majorly counter the Termagants. As long as he can stay in cover, he will take very little damage, uh, bleed a lot of models while taking very little damage himself. I don't really know if this counts as cover. Well, it does say it, does say it is yellow cover, but I imagine it's also a line of sight blocker this big column, that is. Alright, Strike Squad. We have a new Strike Squad from Jesui. He's also got a Purgation Squad. Meanwhile, on this side, it looks like things are actually happening between these players. Assault Marines jumping in. That is a risky jump, I feel. These Assault Marines have very, very low health, but so does the Brother Captain. Bro Captain actually goes down to a sink kill from the Force Commander. Force Commander jumping on that, bro. And Assault Marines do get out of there so that they will not lose any more models. Meanwhile, here is the Interceptor Squad still at three of their models. And this Force Commander needs to be careful. He does have the Armor of Alacrity. Generally the less commonly used Armor Warrior for the Force Commander. But by no means bad. It gives him a passive speed buff as well as a speed boost ability that's even greater than his passive speed buff. Does not give as much health as the Artificer armor, though, so it doesn't really... This is not the best for making him as tanky as possible, but it makes him faster, and, I mean, you can just weigh the trade-off. Players do buy both of these. I think, generally, though, the Artificer armor is preferred and more commonly purchased. I'm not necessarily saying it's better, just saying that it's generally preferred and more commonly purchased. Looks like guards would manage to get a decap on the natural VP for the blue team. Smith is going to take back his VP. I thought Hibble was going to turn around and start shooting the tech marine again. Although, at the moment, now that there are, there are two squads of guardsmen and the Inquisitor, they might be able to force off the tech marine. Instead, he's going for engaging the guardsmen, or not the guardsmen, the Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. Manages to force one off, pin the other with the crippling volley. The Inquisitor right here has the crossbow bolt pistol. It gives her a decent ranged weapon, 31.5 DPS. Also gives her the crippling volley ability, which is a snare ability. It is, this snare ability, <coughs> this snare ability doesn't last too long, but it's something you can get in tier one, and you have to wait it out. It's not like the Chains of Torment, where you can destroy some kind of central mass to uh, get rid of it more quickly. Tech Marine goes down, was completely overwhelmed by the red team right there. Red team looks like they're pretty much dominating this particular engagement at the moment. Going to get a full generator bash. We do have a pretty sizable force from Sototar as well as Hibble. I mean, Hibble is actually from the bottom lane. So he made a hard lane switch. Does a full retreat. I feel like that full retreat from Hibble was not necessary. I think maybe he just decided he wanted to go, wanted to go back to his lane, to like go back to fighting in his lane. Uh, certainly for the purposes of holding the top lane, I feel like that full retreat was not necessary. They could have continued fighting uh, against the Grey Knights together. They kind of just, just gave it up. Hibble just bought a bunch of generators on a contested VP. I suppose if the stormtroopers actually like try to commit to taking out these generators, it will take them a pretty long time. So this is a big time commitment for Z-Bag to be bashing these generators with units that will not bash them very quickly. Uh, when these units could be doing something else. Although, I mean, I guess what else can they do at this point? But, well... Hibble might actually be able to hold onto these generators, or more specifically, Sototar, since he will be the one to defend them. And he is moving back out. You know, we have some back bashing stormtroopers. Oh no, they aren't bashing! They're going for this whirlwind! This is actually a really nice play. Managed to catch the whirlwind isolated through the melta bomb. Although it looks like maybe they came out of infiltration a little too early. They are going to finish it off anyway, though. And they retreat out of there. We could see a grenade on retreat, though, um, by the scouts. Does not even attempt it, though. Grenade on retreat could have could have done a lot of damage to the Stormtrooper squad. I don't think it would have wiped it, but could have definitely killed those three bunched-up models. 
Although, with all of this blue stuff right here as well, if his teammates had a little bit of presence of mind, probably could have finished off uh, those Stormtroopers as well. But either way, Stormtroopers still alive. Can't undo the past. And now we have more Guardsmen ready to bash Generators. This advance, yeah, I mean, this advance here, Hibble right now actually really appearing to be the star in this game. He's getting really, really good doubles, and he really seems to be doing well um, in supporting his teammates. And I feel like this is a mistake by, by Flayed One. Flayed One right here, he, I feel like it would have been better for him to come here with his teammate uh, to ensure a full bash of power and then even hold uh, this, basically just hold the position right here. Because as it is, Hibble was not really able to take care of it by himself. He was only able to destroy a node. So, Flayed One was kind of missing right there. He stays out on the field, I guess not wanting to overcommit, but he, in that case, he undercommitted, actually. He, he actually was just standing here while Hibble was trying to bash the generators. And I don't want to say this, like, pejoratively about him, but, like, basically I'm just pointing out what he, in that particular engagement, what he did not do, uh, basically what he did not do well and could have done better. We now have a Tech Marine with the Plasma Gun. Very interesting, considering he is against a Guard player. <laughs> well, let's see. That player, oh, he is in the middle, so he might have occasion to fight some Space Marines. Um, and he might also want to try to pop those Warrior Mobs with the Plasma Gun. The Tech Marine Plasma Gun is majorly powerful. Flayed One now is losing a ton of squads. What is he doing? He had so many squads, and he just lost most of them. He does have a brood nest up. Maybe he was relying on that, and he was out of range of it. Wow, Flayed One is getting flayed. He's probably going to lose... Yeah, he loses the Warriors as well. My god. Flayed One nearly just lost his entire army. What a counterattack. Hibble, meanwhile, coming back out. Let's see if he can be the star. I feel like he's getting too close with the Guardsmen, and now he needs to start kiting. All right, he does manage to get that snare, but one particular spot of Guardsmen needs to retreat. The other ones should actually turn around and start shooting those purifiers. They should have turned around a little bit earlier, in my opinion. This particular spot of Guardsmen needs to go. Like, one stray bullet is going to finish them off. He's going to lose the spot of Guardsmen. Please, no, he's going to lose it. He lost it. He was doing so well. All right. So the red team are still holding these generators. Uh, with this many Grey Knights here, oh, all right. He's not going to destroy the gen generators. Again. He actually wants to capture the farm for himself. And, you know, I think he's in a decent position to do that. Z-Bag has the largest army right now. Uh, Soto Tar, he's also, Z-Bag is also at a compositional advantage with this Dreadnought out on the field right now. And Soto Tar really not having any adequate counters to it. In fact, he, he has virtually no counters to it. Uh, Z-Bag did, however, just lose his Bro Captain. And the Assault Marines seem to be, what are they, it's hard to even tell what they're doing. In fact, the, well, Soto Tar seems to be winning the Infantry War, but here is some support from Flayed One with a new army, just building new Hormagons. I wonder if he even used the Without Number Global to just quickly put some new units out on the field. I don't think so, because he he would have gotten term against two with the Without Number Global, and these are his existing term against that he already had before. Ooh, this Grey Knight Dreadnought now in a little bit of trouble, but it would, what it needs to do, actually, is force melee the Stormtroopers, because that's the, the main thing that's going to do the most damage. But I think it's too caught up meleeing the... The Hormagons as well as the Gene Stealers. So the Dreadnought goes down. Z-Bag actually getting hit pretty hard in that engagement. Considering he went into it with a compositional advantage against Sototar. But I mean, I guess the, the micro and just the way he chose his engagements uh, did, did not go in his favor. And of course he did get doubled. Let's not forget that. He got doubled. And that's definitely part of what, what really hurt him. And Z-Bag not too happy after, after uh, well, what happened in that engagement. Scouts are definitely going to get white for Sojatar. I think he's just caught not paying attention. Even with 
how much health they had at the start of the gate, those scouts should have been kiting away. And pretty much once those those purifiers got in range, he should have retreated those scouts out of there. So unnecessary scout loss. I believe they did have a sergeant upgrade, so there is a little bit of investment there that he lost. And it, it is, it's like a significantly bigger loss to lose one of those cheap base squads if you've actually given them an upgrade. Like if you lose them at the start of the game, or well, if you lose them when they have no upgrade, it's, it's not nearly as big of a deal. Because you've only spent requisition and you've spent a very small amount of requisition. When you've actually thrown an upgrade onto one of those starting squads, you're actually uh, adding something like almost often almost a hundred requisition to to the total cost of the unit usually you're taking a unit that cost in the low 200 range of requisition and now the total investment in it is actually a low 300 and you have the power power expenditure as well nice flank or nice with the inquisitor getting around um the firing arc of the tarantula turret very well played the scouts are managing to repair it but i think the inquisitor yes she does finish it off well played so hibble i mean he did lose lose one of those squads in a way that was not particularly nice but otherwise i, I feel like hibble is doing pretty well overall with some of his plays he's making good tactical plays things like walking Ooh, do we see a keeping barrage but yeah he's making good tactical plays things like circumventing the firing arc of the turret with his inquisitor so that he can kill it um, going around with his stormtroopers so that they can assassinate a whirlwind. And I mean, at least right now, he has to make the good tactical plays because he doesn't really have enough units to, to confront things head on. And that's because he's saving up for a Bane Blade. Hive Tyrant goes down for Flayed One. And Flayed One, he, he, I think the only Tier 2 unit he ever got were the Gene Stealers. I mean, typically, usually players will get Probably, I would say the average is probably like two tier tier two units in tier two. Sometimes, it's definitely also very common for players to only get one tier two unit in tier two, and then maybe invest in like upgrades or if they got a long tier one. Of course, sometimes players will go for long tier twos and they will stay in tier two, but it is well, yeah. Anyway, we had the Bro Captain going down again. Uh, Z-Bag having yet more trouble. He's got a Vindicare Assassin right here. Vindicare Assassin, I think Target Acquired is active on the Vindicare Assassin, increasing the damage that he does by 50%, I believe, for a period of time. Although, while after that ability runs out, um, he will suffer actually suffer penalties, uh, I believe, to his maybe his reload speed. So he will actually be doing less damage after that period runs out. And Z-Bag, or not Z-Bag, Hibble losing another Garden Squad. So seeing a lot of drop micro on the different sides of this game. Smith even apparently lost a squad. I believe he definitely lost a squad of Devastators. I wonder if he ever had a squad of Tactical Marines. I'm pretty sure he did. So he lost a squad of Tactical Marines as well. Um, regardless of squad losses, the blue team is now taking a significant lead in VPs, 392 to 178. Force Commander right here was, I think, trying to deal with these scouts, but he got forced off, didn't have too much health left, and did not want to die. Wow, Hibble is actually bringing out major he's bringing out he's he's choosing like the armor company doctrine for the imperial guard like if this was if this was company of company of heroes or company of space marines um hippo would be choosing the armor doctrine right now because he's got a bane blade he's got one lehman rust building he says he's gonna get another one he just needs to make sure he has repairs to support this. He will absolutely need a repair bunker because right now he's low on squads. And even with squads, even with guards and squads for repair, um, if he has this many vehicles out on the field or if he's going to have, especially if he's going to have three, he will want to have um, repair bunkers. Ooh, this is so painful. We have the Inquisitor right here with the Excruciators using the Assail ability on Grey Knight Terminators to snare them. Grey Knight Terminators, any kind of Terminator, is extremely vulnerable to snaring abilities since they have no way of getting out of them. 
any other unit or any regular infantry unit can always just retreat out of a snare ability uh, even though that's never an ideal answer to just retreat out of something retreating is never an ideal well it's not the ideal answer but it at least can help you cut your losses all right we have an orbital bombardment going in uh oh no oh i thought those termagants were gonna walk right into it as is the orbital bombardment catches almost nothing might have done some minor damage to the Bane Blade, but did not catch any infantry units. This squad of Grey Knight Terminators is in a lot of trouble. The uh, Gene Stealers go for um, the... They actually went for the, the Plasma Cannon Devastators rather than the Terminators. I think that was a misplay. I think he should have kept the, these Gene Stealers um, on the Terminators because I think he would have finished off this Terminator squad. And even if... He actually managed to finish off the Devastator. <laughs> killing a Devastator is worth nowhere near as much as killing off an entire Terminator squad. I don't know why the Purifiers are leading the line against the Bane Blade. I mean, they do have a heavy melee Demon Hammer, but that's not going to do a whole lot of damage, and they will definitely lose uh, a whole lot harder. We have a Orb of the Omnissiah going in, manages to disable this Bane Blade, but with no follow-up. That really doesn't prove to be a, that strong of a play. Red team with not too many VPs left, 63 to 377 for the blue team. Uh, it is a VP cap in the red team's favor, though. They actually have a double cap. Soon, they might even make it a triple. Right now, it's a two to nothing, though. Vindicar Assassin will come out, start taking some shots at the Assault Marines. But the Vindicar Assassin absolutely has to respect the fact that there is a Force Commander here. The Assault Marines even decide to jump to try to chase off the Vindicar Assassin. And Vindicar Assassin gets out of there, actually lost half of his health in that engagement. The Vindicar Assassin, in my opinion, a very, very good unit. In my opinion, actually an essential unit, but some people will definitely disagree with that. Um, but he is also a glass cannon. He is a very, like, you really have to be very, very careful when using the Vindicare Assassin. If you don't react when he gets jumped or when the unit tries to teleport on him, you really can lose the Vindicare Assassin like, pretty much just right then and there. Uh, since he's a single entity, he has one of the lowest healths or lowest health pools of any single entity in the game. Hive Tyrant goes down again for what seems like at least the third time, possibly even more than that. And we actually have a... this is a... Executioner Lehman Ross. Wow, so many things going down. Oh, heroes going down left and right. Jasui loses his Bro Captain. His Bro Captain level 7 though. We have a level 5 Tech Marine. Z-Bag's Bro Captain is only level 3. Level 4 Inquisitor. Level 4 Hive Tyrant and level four, 5 Force Commander. Inquisitor does level to 5 though, having revived uh, the Hive Tyrant. Jasui says he has no anti-tank. He does... well, that's what happens when you go for two squads of Grey Knight Terminators. Hibble does lose Stormtroopers, but he's gone for two squads of Grey Knight Terminators. He is upgrading to have a Psy Cannon, so he will have some AV. But it's still, I feel, not very strong. He could probably use a Vindicare Assassin of his own, but my god, he has... Jasui has massive upkeep. He has a plus 105 requisition income when his other teammates have plus 221 and plus 279. That's how we know, by comparing it to the other players on his team, that this is a reflection of his upkeep. A reflection of the fact that he's got two Grey Knight Terminators, Purifiers, Purgation, and Strike Squad. These are all probably going to be high upkeep units. Certainly Grey Knight Terminators. I'm not entirely sure what the upkeep is on Strike Squad, but I imagine it's relatively high. Meanwhile, Z-Bag goes for more Grey Knight Terminators. No one wants to get Paladins these days. Uh, and, I mean, at this point, they could definitely use some Paladins. Smith goes for a Land Raider Redeemer, very interestingly. I don't feel that's a good choice with his current army, but if he's going to run with it, he needs to buy more units to support it. And I think, if anything, he needs infantry with it. Because Smith's... 
Smith especially really lacks for anti-vehicle. I feel like he could maybe use like a Laz Cannon Devastator. Um, especially considering we have now we now have the other Lehman Russ. So we have two Lehman Russes. We have a Bane Blade, and we've got a Swarm Lord. We have so much armor from the red team. The blue team is going to need some major, major anti-vehicle. Meanwhile, the blue team actually now has the double cap, 197 to 28. It's a very, very close here. Here is a very, very nice orbital bombardment. Look at how it caught these Tyranids. I believe that's the Hive Tyrant in there. Yeah, it's the Hive Tyrant, so it took out the Hive Tyrant. I think it took, maybe took out, yeah, two Hormigon Broods. Very, very nice. Well played and well placed. But my god, the red team does not have much time. It's actually really close. They could lose it right here. But we do have the the Termigans going for the cap. This is so close. Can they finish it in time? Oh, they got it somewhere else. Or did they get a decap? But either way, they managed to stop it with one VP left. I thought that was going to be it. Smith even called the GG, and it's not a GG yet. Or it could, it could actually turn to be a very good game. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I feel like Smith right now is he's, he's not doing enough. He doesn't have enough, period. He needs to put out another kind of unit. I don't know if... Yeah, I mean, he should not be counting on Terminators or a Venerable Dreadnought at this point. He really should just put out... I mean, if he really wants something super powerful, put out a tank. And he can support that with repairs from... Um, Rocket Run. Unfortunately, this Rocket Run is very little, so that was not a well-placed Rocket Run, very, very sadly. We have yet more um, a sail from the Inquisitor pinning down that Strike Squad, and they're just getting torn apart by double Executioner Lehman Russes. This is definitely some major area of effect damage against infantry, and it will do very, very well against the Terminators. Terminators are stunned. And this Land Raider Redeemer, yes, yeah, Smith has no business engaging right now. They said that they were talking about how someone is new. I'm going to imagine it's Smith because he is, yeah, I mean, just right now he does not have much business engaging. Even though there's a lot of outgoing anti-infantry firepower on the Land Raider Redeemer, um, it doesn't do much AV. Wow, it looks like a squad of Terminators even went down for a Je suis le macaque. One-to-one -one cap, 150. Terminators go down without even finishing the cap. Wow, and it, that was beautiful, because if he had finished that cap, the blue team would have won. Not finishing that cap not only puts the red team back in the game, it puts them in the game very strongly, because they just killed two squads of Terminators. Um, blue team is now actually looking pretty weak. I mean, they still have to worry about, like, a potential back cap, like... Right now, it looks like Z-Bag is going for the cap, and he can just put these Terminators on the cap. I don't think anything can kill these Terminators fast enough to save the day for the red team. What could save the day from the red team is some kind of decap. Oh, well, well, I guess they, they managed to stop the cap, but that was only to white it, white it out. That's a one-to-one. -one. Meanwhile, Terminators over here actually managed to get the decap, so VP's again going in favor of the red team. They have no room for error, really. And if the blue team get... I mean, the blue team have now had two instances where it looks like where it looked like it was going to be GG in their favor. And now here they are, still fighting it out. Bro Captain, I mean, he's going to try to just get on the point, but I think without... He does have the immortal ability from the Holy Armor of Titan. Is he, it's too late, I think. He... Even if he activates that, he just doesn't have enough health. Just one in there with with too little health. And Sototar has some Terminators that he managed to get a decap. And Jesui Le Macaque is actually saying that they lost. He's losing hope. All they need to do is get a unit on the point. But there's a Bane Blade right here. It is the Bane Blade. And we see. Lehman Russ is giving themselves levels by destroying a bunch of generators. So now we've got two level 2 Lehman Russes, one nearly level 3. So even doing some increased damage, maybe even going to try to threaten the scouts off the point. Meanwhile, we have something else, more Terminators going for a back cap. But the Terminators 
they shy away from it. There is actually a ton of potential damage here. And the VP is now actually looking close enough that this is anyone's game. And it's a 2-1 to one cap in the red team's favor. Terminator's even getting chased off. And yeah, I mean, it's sad to say it, but Smith right now really just hasn't been contributing that much for, for the past, like, at least five, if not ten minutes or so, with just a Land Raider having never gotten anything else beyond that Land Raider. One of the things, like, you need to understand about the Land Raider is that it's it's a base. It's a mobile base. It's... So, wow. And this game is actually definitely going, going to go in favor of the red team. There's nothing the blue team can do to bring it back in their favor. And the red team take it against all odds, quite miraculously. What are the levels of the heroes, though? We have a level 8 bro captain who only has an armor upgrade, an armor war gear. Level 9 tech marine. So the tech marine himself did a lot. But Smith really did not get enough other units. And we have Z-Bag with the Terminator spam. Z-Bag with a level 5 Bro Captain, level 7 Inquisitor, level 5 Hive Tyrant, and a level 7 Force Commander. Interesting game. Hope you enjoyed it.